Hey guys, today I will show you how to make this to this. Let's get started. Shit, I changed it back. So it's very important if you wanna attract viewers on YouTube or in whatever video content you're doing, you wanna have some really nice visuals for people to look and see, oh, this looks nice. This person must know what they're doing, even though you probably don't. And so as a person who's coming from a filmmaking background, I know how important visuals and audio is, as well as really good editing. So I want to make my studio look a bit better for the YouTube videos so that you guys can enjoy them even more as well. And I recommend if you have the money to do the same thing, because if you've been careful with things, you shouldn't spend too much money to do this. The whole setup I just showed you costs less than 70 pounds so you can easily save that money if you drink less coffees or alcohol. This is what I believe the order of how you should upgrade your equipment is. But assuming none of your equipment is like way too shitty. So obviously if you have a really shitty camera that looks like you're filming from a potato, you should probably upgrade that camera first. First, audio. Second is your backdrop, your background. Third is the lighting. And then fourth is the actual camera, the lens, all that stuff. If you're recording using your camera's built-in microphone, your sound is gonna sound like this which is basically shit. And this is the worst thing you can have in your video. Because as you're experiencing right now, people can watch videos with lesser video quality and better audio quality than the opposite. If the sound is shit, no one really wants to watch your video. Now I'm gonna switch to the cheap microphone I bought to show you the difference. So now you're listening to me using the cheap lav mic I bought. Listen to the difference in sound quality. So I'm basically using this. You can hear me from here. Tap, tap. Yo, 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 pop. So this is a 15 pound love microphone I bought from Amazon, that's a chest here there. <laughs> and it has a little clip, it has an extension cord. If you're just starting out, I would recommend buying something like this because it's just very cheap and you can upgrade your equipment later, but just this makes it a very worthwhile investment. And this is what I'm using to do like the short films I have in my videos as well. If you have the money, I would buy something like a shotgun microphone, a Rode video mic. Those are probably the best option you can get, but those cost more. And I did look into cheaper options, like there's 30 pound shotgun mics, but I heard the sound quality and to my ears, that's not very acceptable. I prefer having a cheap love mic than the cheap shotgun mic. So now let's move on to the background. Now I've done motion graphic design and visual effects for years, but when it comes to indoor design, I'm really shit at that stuff. So I had to talk with a friend of mine, Nicolas, who helped me out a lot in choosing some nice decorations and decorations that also made the room and the house look nicer. So it's a good investment even outside the YouTube stuff. Nicolas also has a podcast called Cypriot Curiosity. I'll provide the link somewhere here. Anyway, I had a chat with him and we discussed what we're buying. We chose some items to use in the studio, which I'm gonna show you in a bit. And basically what you're gonna do when you're designing your background, first of all, make it look interesting. So you might buy something that has a cool lighting, a cool look. Also, ideally the items you have in your background would sound somehow show some parts of your personality or your interests so that it gives the viewer a bit of extra touch of how you are as a person. Now, some of you might know I'm a big Quentin Tarantino fan. So I ended up buying a few posters like this. This is a nice Kill Bill minimalistic poster I bought. I'm gonna put the links for everything in the description by the way. So what I got is I got three posters and then three frames. I use them to decorate this room and another room I'm gonna show you later. So this is my one of my Quentin Tarantino ones. This is my Christopher Nolan Memento poster. Both great films by the way, if you haven't watched them, watch them. And I'm gonna put them behind me right now so you see how the room looks. Okay, now you see the posters behind me. They filled that white wall very nicely. And I wanna add a few more things to make it seem a bit more interesting. So another thing I bought is this Pac-Man thing. It's not actually Pac-Man, it's the ghost from Pac-Man, but whatever. And you basically plug this into your laptop, I'll show you right now. And you can turn on the light switch and it turns on and glows different colors, which cycle, which is a nice lighting decoration. There's also a party mode, which basically changes the color while you're playing music. Let's try that. <laughs> but that's too much for a video. I'm just gonna put it back to the normal cycle mode. You can see this gives a nice glow on the background. And I wanna add one more thing to make it a bit more interesting. Here, because we have the white wall, I wanna add some extra lighting. So another thing I bought is this RGB TV backlight. It's basically a roll of LEDs, which you basically cut and you put behind your TV to make it glow and look nice. And what I did is basically cut a piece and put it behind my desk. Right here, I'm gonna show you a shot of how it looks from behind the desk. And after you turn it on, it looks like this. And one more thing I don't really like here is I have a bunch of shit on my desk, which I don't really wanna see in the shot. So I'm gonna remove the screen here and this microphone and tidy the cables a bit, make it look a bit nicer. And our background here is complete. Moving on to the next step. Right now, all I have is lighting is my overhead lamp I have in my room and this doesn't look very nice. So what I did is I looked for some nice cheap lighting and I wasn't really sure what was the best idea to get. So I contacted my friend, Sean Waldy, who's a wizard with the lighting and cinematography. If you need someone to do your lighting or camera work, he's the guy to go to. I 
I'll leave some links here somewhere in the screen so you can find him if you want to get in touch with him. What I bought is a set of two softbox lights around 800 watts. They're pretty cheap, around 70 pounds for two. They give some reasonably strong lighting. The other options you could buy are going with a ring light or some LED light or umbrella lights. I actually did use a ring light for a bit at the beginning, but it's not very flexible and it gives you that weird ring around your eyes, which makes you look kind of like a zombie. So a softbox might be your most flexible bed. So now I turn off the ceiling light and turn on the soft talk, which is right on the right of me. So it gives me like a nice bright lit side of my face and because i see i'm blending a bit with the background here i'm gonna add a backlight something a bit different to make my body look distinct from the background so i'll just use my bedside table lamp turn it on and i want it to give me a bit of a light like this so i'll just put it behind me so now it should give me a bit of a highlight on my left side and also i can see this light is being reflected on the poster here so i'm gonna move the light a bit and hopefully now it's all fine so one last step is we want to change our camera settings to make it look a bit nicer i want to make myself the brightest object in the shot i want to make the background a bit darker and keep me lit so what i want to do is move the light as close to my face as i can and then expose the camera so i'm at the normal brightness while the background is a bit darker and if you have a normal camera you can do a few different things i want to tell you about now but right now i'm using my phone as a camera because my camera is back home first thing you have to do is take the aperture of your camera down to the lowest possible setting and this will do two things first it will allow more light to go into the camera so that you can have a brighter shot and then it's going to give you more depth of field or bokeh which is basically what you see when you see very nice dslr pictures or movies where the person or the object is in focus and everything behind is blurry and then you want to play with the shutter speed of your camera it should be around double your frame rate so if you're shooting at 30 fps it should be 1 over 60 and also adjust your ISO to be as low as possible so you don't have any noise and grain and your shot isn't over or underexposed. So you play with these three settings until you have something you like and it's probably exposed. If you're using a phone like I am right now, you can do most of these settings except the aperture by using different camera apps. What I'm using is open camera. It's pretty good, it's free. I'll change the settings on my phone right now and show you the result. Okay, so I've changed the settings now. Hopefully you can see the difference. Once I get my camera back, I'm also gonna change the aperture so it looks even nicer. I actually do miss my camera camera sometimes. So let's see how everything looks behind the scenes. That's the main area, my desk. Then I have the light on the right, which gives me a nice highlight. You can see it on the chair right now. And if I go to the left, we can see I have the softbox, which gives me the main key light. And I have the monitor over there. The monitor I actually use to monitor the shots. I can also see my lines when I forget what I have to say. I have a couple more tricks to make sure the visual quality is really good. But before we get there, make sure you hit like and subscribe if you're enjoying the video so far. So one very important thing is the white balance. You basically go to your camera to see white as white. Because usually what happens is we have lights which cause the hue of the colors to shift. What you want to do ideally is point your camera to a white surface and set that as the white balance and then all the colors should fix themselves and another thing that will really make your video stand out is to do some nice color grading color grading is basically what you do at the end of your video editing process where you basically go and make the colors more vivid give it a nice stylistic color play with the settings until you have something you really like or look at other videos that look nice and try to emulate the look and then save that preset so every time you use video recorded in that same room you can use the same preset so you don't have to do everything again and again and again now as a little bonus i'm going to show you how i changed another place of the house using the stuff I bought so that you can see an even cheaper setup which still looks nice okay so now we're in the living room I'm not gonna take everything apart again but I'll show you what I added first of all I have five guitars over here which are a nice decoration for the background now I don't recommend you going and buying five guitars just for YouTube that would be a stupid investment and to be honest thinking about it right now maybe buying five guitars isn't the best idea anyway but I already had them so I just put them here to fill the background I bought this Inglorious Bastards Quentin Tarantino poster this neon light which is shaped like a lightning and I have a small light over here at the back which forms a nice bug light and I have my laptop here which I use to read my notes and also it fills the frame nicely now let's turn off the room lights and turn on these lights over here to see how it looks Okay, now we have all the lights on, the main softbox and everything looks nice. So this is the final look for this environment. So in conclusion, you can see that using very little money, you can make your video look much, much nicer. It does make a big difference. So I think it's worth the cost if you do it the smart way. You need to remember that the content is still 80% of what the video is about. If you have bad content and a nice looking video, you're not gonna get any viewers. People are still not gonna wanna watch your video. But if you already have good video, having that extra step of having good visual quality and good audio quality 
community will really make your videos stand out. Everything I bought and showed you in this video is in the description below. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and click on the notifications bell to be updated when I release a new video. Tell me the coolest thing you found that you want to use in your videos in the comments below. Thanks for watching guys, I will see you next time.